It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. Thanks for being with us, friends. My name is Mike Bernard. I am the host of the Wise Money Show. I'm also one of the certified financial planners here with me in the KFG studios, my business partners and friends, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Do you have a goal to be completely debt-free before you reach retirement? Paying off your mortgage while also saving aggressively for retirement may seem completely daunting to you. There are a lot of opinions out there about whether keeping a mortgage in retirement is okay, and there's just as many opinions about whether it's important to build your nest egg instead. We'll weigh in on these important goals and more on today's episode of Wise Money. Getting a lot of questions on the YouTube channel to various videos about the CARES Act, the stimulus, and all of that that was started to that was sent out last week. People had questions about that that they posted below some videos. Also, uh, going way back, we were talking about the um, donor advised funds. That was stirring up a few questions from some listeners and fans of the show. So, we'd love to hear from you if you have questions. We will get back to you. You can call or text us five seven four two 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 thousand. That's 574-222-2000. Of course, on the YouTube channel, we've got videos right there. You can leave comments below and questions, and we'll get back to you. Just go to YouTube, search The Wise Money Show. And then online, you can submit questions there as well. Search thewisemoneyshow.com, and that's where you'll find us, and you can submit your question right there. All right, so the headliner topic today, uh, I've had in my mind for a while, and then with this crisis going on, I saw an article on the Wall Street Journal uh, two weeks ago, maybe, that, uh, that was pondering the same questions, like, well, you stole it from me. I had it first. <laughs> but it's, hey, is it okay to retire with a mortgage? And there's some really strong opinions, like Josh said. I mean, some people feel very, very passionate that, no, you can't. And yeah, no, it's fine. It's no big deal. And then I also wonder now, with this financial crisis brought on from the coronavirus, has that changed? So do you feel comfortable retiring with a mortgage. I'm just going to open it up from there, guys. What what are your thoughts? You know, I, I've i never um, run into a, a client who regrets getting to, re, uh, getting to retirement with no debt. I have seen some people that get there and say, oh, man, I wish I didn't have this. And it, it's often in times where they're feeling some sort of a cash flow crunch and they think, man, if only this payment wasn't there. And so, you know, a big part of getting ready for retirement is just making sure that you have a big enough nest egg and a large enough stream of income that's reliable and can handle whatever obligations you're going to have, whether that's a rent payment or a mortgage or just putting food on the table and still being able to give some gifts to your kids and grandkids in, in retirement. I mean, you mentioned, um, I believe you mentioned fixed income, or at least income, but I, my brain said fixed, and then obligation, monthly obligations. And I think that's the issue here with mortgage is, is um, in, in a geeky budget, <clears throat> the one that I've built, it's, it's a fixed expense, which means, you know, rain or shine, pandemic or not, you got to pay that thing. And in retirement, those fixed obligations can really eat up a lot of your cash flow because the most common phrase about cash flow in retirement is, I'm on a fixed income. No, we can't buy more Christmas presents this year. I'm on a fixed income, <laughs> and, which is the line I used to get from, my, from grandma. Um, but, uh, but, but yeah, I mean, a, a mortgage is a fixed obligation when you've got fixed cash flow, and that can sometimes be a little uncomfortable in, in retirement. Yeah, I've got five good reasons uh, why it might be okay to go into retirement with a mortgage. But I think the question is not, should I go into retirement with a mortgage. The question is, what things do I need to accomplish financially before I consider retirement? I, that's, that's, and I want you to continue, but I wrote that question down just, just before we started uh, airing. Is a mortgage a reason to delay retirement? Well, well, that question is answered in the context of a financial plan. Because if you've got, let's just say two teachers, so I've got two teachers with two pensions and two social securities. I might have fixed income close to what, it, what I had while I was working. Well, if my, my, if my fixed income in retirement is going to be similar to what it was while I was working, 
that's a totally different ball game than someone who says, listen, I've saved three quarters of a million dollars and I've got social security. I got to I, I gotta make it on this. And oh, by the way, my three quarters of a million dollars, I, I saw, you know, a lot closer to uh, to 500 here uh, in the last couple of months. And, and and I'm 62 and I want to retire or I'm retiring right now. And so my Social Security is a uh, reduced amount. Absolutely. And if you're relying upon distributions coming out of your investment portfolio, you, you may not uh, put a lot of faith in that right now, or you may want to actually pause on the distributions that you're taking just because the markets are down so much. But you asked the question, should not having your mortgage paid off yet, should that cause you to delay retirement? And the answer, in my opinion, is maybe, as Kevin said, it depends upon your plan. Because if if your retirement plan only works if you march into retirement debt free, because you've you've done what it takes to squeeze your monthly obligations down to bare minimum, getting rid of that fixed cost that you're referring to, Mike. If if you haven't accomplished that yet and you're marching into retirement not quite ready because you still have that that pesky mortgage or more importantly that pesky mortgage payment. Hmm then you know, maybe you need to do everything within your power to postpone retirement, give yourself a little bit more time to get that thing wiped out, or give more time for your retirement nest egg to rebound after this crisis that we're in. Because it is interesting to me. I was talking with some folks yesterday, and he's 62 and has a mortgage of $185,000. And I thought, what does it tell without knowing anything about them. So um, they're folks from, uh, just let's That's just say I've known yeah. them for a long time. And so I, I've, I've known them for a long time. And, um, but I said, what does, if I didn't know anything about their situation, if I'm 62 and I've got that mortgage, what, what does it tell me or what, it, what could it tell me? Because if they've got a big mortgage, that it, it might tell me something, it might not. But if they've got a big mortgage, a couple of car payments, and some credit card debt, that might tell me that they're the person who should not go into retirement with a mortgage because of their financial skill stack. And we did a, a show on that. But it, it might tell me that, hey, we need to run a few laps here and get used to having a budget. Mm. We might have to f- – to f- and I, I brought up the, the B word, and yes, it, it was a four-letter word um, as we talked about it. And I said, hey, this is a time to start getting in retirement shape. Like there's, a, there's conditioning that needs to happen. And if you've never – you know, I don't know if you've ever started in the gym after not being there for a long time. But if you've ever done it, it it can be it can be really painful, and 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 this can be really painful too. But as we've been telling people, there are no cars on the roads, so they're fixing the roads. This is the best time. And if there's something on your financial road that needs to get fixed, fix it now. If you're at home, if you're laid off or furloughed, get that budget out, dust it off, and perfect that bad boy. Well, both of you have referenced that that B word, the budget, now. And it's, it's for the purpose of getting in retirement shape, as you said, Kevin, but it's freeing up cash flow that you have some choice over. As you're preparing for retirement, you can either use that cash flow to get that mortgage whittled down faster, or sometimes, and maybe this is the time, it can instead be used to buy low into your investment portfolio to beef that up as well. And that is the age old tension or the question that people ask, should I be working hard to get debt free, or should I be building up my nest egg instead? There's and there's there's pain in that, as Kevin mentioned, and it's it, there's two t- types of pain: the pain of discipline or the pain of regret. Right. So we're going to be talking a little bit more about entering retirement with a mortgage. So that and more coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Hello, YouTube. Welcome to the Wise Money Show channel. This is our weekly Wise Money Show. It is a radio show that airs in northern Indiana, a couple different stations every Saturday morning. And uh, you get the full hour right here. You even get um, uh, uh, some banter, some bonus content during the breaks. So thanks for being with us. If this is your first time to this channel, be sure to subscribe. 
and turn on notifications so that you are made aware every time we drop a new episode, as well as all the other content that we push out there. And with the crisis, it was once a week, every other week or so. And now with the crisis, it's every single business day I'm coming to you with the next wise step of financial nugget. So turn on uh, that notification, be sure to subscribe and give us that thumbs up that helps other people come here when they're looking for financial wisdom instead of just the financial noise that's out there. So, all right, thanks for being here. Okay, so oh, lots of good stuff. I didn't hit any of the stats. I'd like to start with that. <coughs> and then I think we want to, I, you know, it's possible. It's very, I, so there's two things that I feel like we touched on, but I hope we are able to hit more in the second segment. And that is, um, it, it, the, there is no absolute answer. The answer is your financial plan. And, and so driving a little bit more about what that means. Kevin, I think that analogy with the teachers is absolutely appropriate. Um, but then also, if your plan suggests that you should or that you could um, retire with the mortgage, I mean, there's no shame in that. Don't feel like you've let yourself down or don't feel like you should be embarrassed because you, because you have a mortgage. And so anyway, and I also... If we get into the coronavirus stuff, I want to talk about, well, why might you have a mortgage? I thought you were starting to go there, and it got my brain thinking. I mean, one of the reasons why you might, just in case we don't have time to have this on the air, you've refinanced. You've mm -hmm. been capturing refinances, right? Because interest rates have been going lower. So every five years, you're like, I'm going to refinance because that saved me money. And then it's saved you money, and so you've used that extra money for other things, right? And you didn't have, you either didn't feel the need or you were looking at mathematically and like, really? I'm going to pay extra on this 3.5% debt? <laughs> that, <laughs> no, no, no thanks. No. So I think it's more common when I share these stats. Maybe we can talk about that. I think it is more common that people are entering retirement with a mortgage, and that's not necessarily an edict about irresponsibility. Yeah, I, I think – so, and I, I would love to share my uh, – my five reasons. Yeah. If you, when, what segment? We're just talking about mortgages and retirement. So, yeah, for three segments. So I'd, we just got through one and. Yeah, I would, I would. So I can give you a reason to keep your mortgage. If you say the mortgage interest deduction on your taxes, I'm going to throw my microphone at you. <laughs> because YouTube, it's, that's pretty much. So that's that's like saying, <laughs> I will I will give you a dollar if you give me twenty five cents back. My son Kuiper, when we play Monopoly, he loves it when 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 it's like, okay, bud, you you, you owe me uh, you know a hundred dollars for whatever rent, and all he has is a five hundred. He gives me five hundred. I he gives me one five hundred dollar bill. I give him four one hundreds back, and he's like, oh, okay, cool. And he's he's excited about that because he has more bills, <laughs> more pieces of paper. So a a a mortgage interest is a cost. A deduction is a you there, get a small a, to, a fractional the, benefit. Then of let's that. say it on the radio. Let, let let me say it on the radio. Then I've said it. Let it, me say that's the number one reason. <laughs> oh gosh, I I just need to just bait you. Okay, let me spend nine minutes on that. No, do you want to? No. Jeez. All right, ready. <laughs> I'm just going to tell you, it is okay to enter retirement with a mortgage. It is, as long as it fits within your financial plan. There should be no shame. There should be no worry. You should have clarity and confidence because you know you've run the miles, you've conditioned, and you have that clarity and confidence that you can retire even with having a mortgage. It's no sweat. We're talking about that and more. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every single episode, the full episode of The Wise Money Show is right there on podcast wherever you listen. Whether that's iTunes or Google Play or anywhere else online, you'll find us there, our podcast. Just search The Wise Money Show, subscribe to it, rate it, and leave comments as well. We appreciate it. All right, so we're talking about having a mortgage in retirement. And one of the things we were talking about on the break, bonus content on YouTube if you're, if you're there, 
is this, the numbers are a little staggering. There's, ni- there's 9.18 million homeowners age 65 or older that have mortgages. That's up 60% from 10 years ago. Okay. Um, the average mortgage is $72,000. I wonder how many of these are just home equity lines from, from some uh, remodel. Hey, I, if I'm going to retire, I'm not going to have this 70s bathroom anymore. Right. Um, in the 90s, the 1990s, only 20% of people age 65 or older had mortgages, and now that number is close to 40%. So it's on the rise, okay? So that could tell you. You could hear that. You could read that in the Wall Street Journal and say, oh, that means people are, uh, you know, I should feel bad if I have a mortgage. No, you might have a mortgage in retirement simply because we have been in this unbelievable stretch of declining interest rates. And so you've just continued to refinance. And that means refinance often we look at a lower mortgage payment but it also means you're stretching your your mortgage out longer and so maybe you were just taking advantage of low interest rates that's certainly possible there there are some who maybe upgraded the the value of their home buying into a different market maybe relocating i actually have a a couple clients right now who are in the process of relocating at retirement so they're transitioning into retirement and a new home at the same time and here's what you know. If, if you live in the Midwest and you relocate to anywhere else in the country, <laughs> most likely that cool house that you have here in, in uh, the South Bend area may not buy the same amount of house um, somewhere else, you know, down in Indy or the Carolinas or Florida or something. And so a lot of, a lot of people are getting the wake-up call that, boy, the proceeds from my house here isn't going to go as far in that new, new house, new location, and so they're ending up with, okay, I'm just going to have to bite the bullet and have a mortgage. That doesn't mean that they've failed right. financially, right? In fact, they're achieving the goal that they want. And the question then becomes, can the nest egg or their game plan uh, produce the income required to support that new mortgage in that new community? As well as the rest of their lifestyle and everything. Kevin, in the first segment, you were talking about five reasons to have a mortgage. Yeah, Josh just took one. <laughs> I mean, basically, if you plan to sell your home... It, it, because the, the thing is, when people hear you shouldn't have a mortgage going into retirement, it's in a vacuum, they say, okay, therefore, it, it's a, a, some sort of mortal sin to have a mortgage going into retirement. It isn't, but there, and so there are reasons why you might, you might have one, you might want to keep it temporarily. So one, one is you plan to sell your home. If you're going to sell your home, you might have a, a better things to do with your money than pay off your mortgage. Because if you're working right now and you're a year or two away from retirement, that's a, a, another reason to have the mortgage is you might be better off putting that money into your retirement plan and getting the tax savings from that than paying down your mortgage. And I just want to underscore that really quick. Kevin mentioned in the last couple of years of retirement, that likely means high income years, high earning years, high tax years, and you're about to go into retirement, which will be lower income, lower tax years. So, hey, this is the last time I'm going to be in the 22 or 24% bracket. Let's get some deduction. Yeah. And another thing is you, you might... Because, again, when people hear, I shouldn't have a mortgage going into retirement, they think, okay, i got to get rid of my mortgage. Well, maybe you should get rid of higher interest debt or higher payment debt right now and, and really deal with, your, deal with a couple things. Number one is your cash flow, but the other is your debt structure. And that's the, there are six areas of financial planning. The first area is your present financial position where you deal with budgeting and look at your net worth and your balance sheet and figure out what, what do I have on my balance sheet and what should I have? What's appropriate for me to have now and as I head into retirement? I, I love that you're talking about the six areas that you brought that up. Um, and this episode, because you could you could say the mortgage discussion is purely present financial position, but it's also we just talked about tax planning. We, ju- we just talked we <laughs> just talked about investments, and we're really talking about retirement. See, there's no way there's no way you can make a great decision in your financial life without looking at how it fits within all six areas. So I want to keep guessing with your five. Okay. My, I'm sure one of those is if you're a pastor. Right. If you're a pastor, that you have special tax benefits related to your housing. Um, now, if you are a pastor and you know what Scripture says about debt, 
right? So you've got to, so, so, so don't balloon up a mortgage and all these sorts of things. I think um, Rick Warren actually <laughs> has tested some of those uh, tax laws. Um, <laughs> but so, so be principled in your life. But if there's a decision between, well, should I pay aggressively on this mortgage to get it paid off before retirement or save up into my 403B, I get additional tax benefits as a pastor for saving in my 403B that others don't. And I get additional tax benefits for having a mortgage in retirement that others don't. Maybe that's a reason. Yeah. If you're a pastor, you have the most complicated financial, uh, certainly your income, the taxation of your income and your financial planning is more complicated than almost any other professional. And you can't get there from here. You can't say, I know how things work, therefore I can tell you how pastor clergy compensation works. It's their dual status employees. It's very complicated. We we serve a lot of them uh, here at Corhorn Financial Group. So if, if you know a pastor who is not uh, who might need some help, send them our way for sure. Especially as the church is obviously dealing with everything from the you know, travel restrictions and large group gatherings, all that sort of stuff. I like that Kevin referenced uh, the fact that there's other debt in many people's lives beyond just the mortgage. And if you're going to go into retirement with debt, the, the reason I like the mortgage better than any of the others is because it's usually at a fixed rate and it's a very low interest rate. And it's something when you have debt and the payment's never going to change throughout retirement, it's one of the few expenses in your life that isn't going to be subject to inflation. It's not going to go up over time. So theoretically, as a percentage of your budget, it's going to get easier and easier to cover. It's the utilities and the food and all that stuff that's going to get more and more expensive as time goes on. Mm. Okay, so in, in light of this economic storm that we're in with the coronavirus, um, Kevin, you talked a little bit about how could this strategy change? You were talking about a situation recently where someone was looking at taking a coronavirus related distribution from their IRA to pay off the mortgage. Is that you want to touch on that really quick? Or I guess how do, how how does this change in light of the coronavirus? OK, this is how it changes in light of the coronavirus. If and I'm I'm not answering your question in the context you answered, you asked it, but this is how it changes. If I have extra money and I've been paying extra on my house, what I might want to do right now is bank that money. Because once it goes into my house, I can't, if I need some money, I can't take my porch to the bank and say, hey, can you give me the value of this, right? I It's, it's, it's fairly illiquid. So I would right now be careful about my cash reserves and I would be likely building my cash reserves instead of paying extra on my mortgage, even if paying off the mortgage was a goal before retirement. More on that. Also want to tell you about the biggest expense category you'll have in retirement. So that and more coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Oh my goodness. I could talk about this for four hours. I know. No one would listen. Huh? <laughs> hey, so... The biggest expense category in retirement is grandchildren. <laughs> right? I knew it. No, it's overwhelmingly. I stole your thunder. Overwhelmingly. Maybe let me spend this time pulling that up. Because what, I, what do you think it is? It's health. I mean, it's not even close. And the, the, the crazy thing is it's likely your health expenses – for the last six months of your life. And I'm not talking about the ones that you actually pay, but I'm talking about the ones that you incur. My mom, on her way out of this world, incurred over 600,000 of medical mm. bills. So, but I, I think, Mike, it would be interesting to say, all right, in light of what we're dealing with right now, for sure, you want to bank. I mean, a reason to not pay off your, your mortgage right now is you have no cash reserves. Right. If you have no cash reserves and you think, well, the sun's shining, the birds are chirping, we're happy. Let's crank on this bad boy. No way. Get your cash reserves where they need to be. Yeah, cash is king, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, we're, I'm excited about the great American comeback story that's coming, but I wouldn't. I wouldn't presume yeah. anything. You know, this has been going on long enough. 
that early on in the crisis, I was having meetings. Here's how long ago it was. It was face-to-face -face in my office. You used to meet with people? Talk, talking about how, okay, if this gets worse, how could it get worse? And therefore, what decisions would you wish you had made today? And the things that we talked about, how it could get worse, when they said, no, well, I mean, that's not going to, they've been happening. You know, mm -hmm. this, is, this in particular was a landlord. It's like, well, this company always pays their rent. So we'll be able to continue. This, this income is reliable. Nope. Nope. So. Housing expenses are the biggest <laughs> in retirement. By far. Yeah. By far. Like multiples. You want to know why? Because of the healthcare system. I, it's because of the healthcare system. Why? Because the average, because Medicare expenses are so low. You say, I didn't know that Medicare covered long term care costs. How many people get oh, that? Everybody has long term everybody. care costs. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you've got those stats. Those numbers? Uh, no, I just have the guide to retirement pulled up here. Yeah, cool. It doesn't, it's just a chart. So I found the average, average housing expense is 1300 bucks. The average healthcare expense is 600 bucks a month. Yeah. It's the largest at every age band too. Brings me back to, we had Amy Masters on the show a while ago. We got to have her back on. Um, and she said, we were talking about budgeting and cash flow, and she said what she's seen, the biggest pain point in people's budget is their housing, their decision. They decided to live in this house or in this area or and the how that crowds other things out of the budget. And so it feels like, well, the problem is Target or the problem are these student loans. No, it's the size of your mortgage because that's always going to be the biggest expense. Mm -hmm. So... All right, so m more on coronavirus changes um, with this because, like you mentioned, Kevin, cash, um, buying low, um, forbearance. So anyway, we just got to wrap this up within these nine minutes because we're going to be transitioning to questions. So third segment. What is the number one uh, expense in retirement? In fact, Josh was just saying over the break, it's the number one expense category for any generation, for your entire life. Oh my goodness, we're gonna talk about that and how you navigate it here. This is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard, here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. To stay up to date on all Wise Money content, you'll find us online. Just search The Wise Money Show. And then everywhere you are on social media, we are there as well. Even fa or excuse me, even YouTube right now getting a lot of play because of the um, you know travel restrictions, quarantine, all that sort of stuff. We're right there. You'll find us. Just search The Wise Money Show wherever you're at. Follow us there. You can leave comments and questions there as well. So we're talking about having a mortgage in retirement. We've talked about how that has significantly increased. It's increased 60% from a decade ago. People age 65 or older that have mortgages. And um, that's okay. It, it just depends on your plan. For many of you, and we're hoping to talk about this here in just a moment, um, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be helpful to pay the mortgage off before you officially retire. And we'll talk about some strategies to do that. But in the context of um, of this coronavirus and this in this crisis, you've you know we we've got a that changes things. Before we get into that though, what is the number one expense that you'll have in retirement? It's your housing expense. You would have thought healthcare, yeah, right. Everyone would would think healthcare. I would have thought healthcare, and this goes beyond just a mortgage though. Right. I mean, there's more cost to your housing. I mean, you've got utilities and real estate taxes and insurance, upkeep, that sort of thing. So just recognize that by knocking out the mortgage, it's not like you've eliminated your housing expenses. In fact, 
you know, I, I feel like one of the great lessons that I've learned from working with clients over the years is the importance of working in the housing component to your overall retirement plan. Because we, we said in an earlier segment that many people get to retirement and they actually upgrade their house instead of downsizing the house. And even if they get to a smaller footprint in the, in the house, it may be a more expensive one, yes. right? Because you either relocate or you're buying something newer, nicer, whatever. And so if that's a, if that's a possibility, if, if there's a chance that you're going to live in a different house when you get into retirement or as you approach retirement, it's important for you to build that into your overall retirement game plan. You know, I, Andrea has already declared to me that we're going to die in this house. And I, I don't think uh, she was threatening me at the time. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. Uh, no, she, this is home, right? This is where we want to live. And, uh, but that may not be you. You maybe want to get out of this weather in the winter. Maybe you want to get somewhere else. And if that's the case, you may need to not only be building up a nest egg and paying down your mortgage and everything, but maybe even building up an extra pool of money that can help you afford a more expensive house when you relocate to a more expensive region. Well, relocate to a more expensive region, but it's also downsized to a more expensive house. Right. And it's interesting as you're talking about the different um, the different things that are considered housing expense, how many of those are connected to a um, the size of your house or the value of your house. You think the size of your house influences the um, the utility bills, right? Um, the size of your house or the neighborhood you live in influences your property taxes. Certainly influences some of the upkeep and whatever. You know, one of the houses we were looking at last time we moved, one of the neighborhoods, you needed to have cedar or something on it. And I'm like, oh my goodness, the cost of staining that and upkeeping that, I don't really need to deal with that. And so <laughs> a lot of expenses are sort of tied to the type of house that you choose, the area that, that it is. So, yeah, I mean, it's a big decision, big financial decision. And that also carries lots of emotion. Speaking of emotion, you know, the, the, the coronavirus and the, this financial challenge that we're in right now impacts um, all areas of your financial life. And I think there's many people that are approaching retirement and maybe had certain financial priorities and those priorities need to shift now. They need to change. And one of those might have been paying off the mortgage. So how how is the coronavirus and this change, how is it impacting this decision of paying your mortgage off before retirement? Well, Kevin, you, you referenced, uh, I don't know if it was in the last segment or maybe at the break during the bonus material, but the, the idea that maybe we should be banking some of the extra cash flow that comes in instead of paying extra on the mortgage. For many people, especially those that are in a little bit of a vulnerable place financially, they absolutely need to make sure they have the emergency fund in place. Make sure that they're building up additional savings to upkeep to maintain the house and, and the rest of your life as well. Those who already have the right cash reserves in place, though, this may be an amazing buying opportunity for them to increase, to, to accelerate their contributions to retirement or investment accounts. Um, you, you know, the market's down right now, and that scares a lot of people out of the markets. People are sellers right now, and that means it could be an amazing time for you to be a buyer if you have the cash flow available. That coronavirus-related distribution is an option as well, where you can pull money out of your IRA, and or not just your IRA, any retirement account that you have, and defer the tax, delay the tax, where you pay a little bit, um, stretch it over three years. That may make sense, although, Kevin, you were just setting an example where, no, it didn't make sense. It was going to push them into the next tax bracket. Right. Well, it's if you are right on the bubble between the 12% and 22% tax bracket, if you if you go above, let's say, $79,000, all the dollars above that will be taxed at 22% if you're married filing jointly. And so I was talking with a couple, and they were saying, hey, we'll pull this money out. We'll, we, there are low tax rates right now. We get to pay the tax on it over three years, so we have the benefit of having it in our account, or we can pay down on our mortgage. I mean, the trick is for them is it didn't quite get rid of their mortgage. So you've got either to start making uh, repayment if you took it as a loan out of the 401k, or you've got to start making tax payments. And the tax payment for them, because they were right on the bubble, is now 20 at 22%, not 12%. 
So it, the, the, the swing there, the delta on, on what they would be paying on this extra money made it not even close. Like you wouldn't do that. And I, I even made the case, even if you could pay it at 12%, that it, that's a, let's call it six thousand dollars a year in extra federal taxes that you'd have to pay. That's still not where your that six thousand dollars should go. You shouldn't be making a six thousand dollar year tax payment. You should be saving either more uh, in retirement, or you should be putting more on your mortgage. One one of the ways you can put more on your mortgage just um, by default. Many people are are recognizing that there's a refinance opportunity happening right now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, maybe it was an unexpected consequence to this financial crisis and this economic concern that we're facing. The Fed has been lowering interest rates, which drags down interest rates across the board in our economy, and that includes mortgages. So I've seen many clients that are actually pausing long enough to say, okay, is this an opportunity for me to get rid of my old 30-year mortgage? Maybe they're 20 years into it or 10 years into it, have 20 years left. What if I refinance down to a 15-year mortgage at today's screaming great rates and knock f- really five years off of the loan without really maybe increasing their payment a whole lot? So the other thing that I'd consider is, um, you know, there's something called a debt snowball. There's amateuriz- amortization spreadsheets and so on that you're a certified financial planner looking at all your priorities in all six areas of your financial life can analyze and help you determine whether you need to pay this mortgage off before you retire, whether you need to delay retirement, or whether it's best from taxes or cash flow or whatever else to be saving more into the 401k. And if the if paying off the mortgage before retirement is necessary, then they can help you build a strategy to do that. Whether it's, hey, pay an extra 250 or pay an extra 100 or pay an extra 1,000 on the mortgage to get it done by X date, they can help you with that. I had someone retire this year where it was a goal, or excuse me, this past year, and made the last payment the month before they retired, and she'd been paying extra on it for a while. So anyway, that was uh, that, that was very helpful. So, All right, we've got uh, listener questions coming up as well as we're going to put the wraps on this uh, topic, having a mortgage in retirement. So that and more coming up here on the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. I forgot to start time. late. I forgot it. I oh. sent you guys a Slack. You looked right at it, too, and then set your timer down. I know. And like, Lindsay like, caught it. A couple seconds, so I was like, like, I, I actually, <laughs> we were already into it enough. So, okay, so on YouTube, so there's a, there's timers and whatnot that we got to, I've got to see to to make sure that we stay in the window we're supposed to, and it, it works perfectly if I turn the timer the on. the button? <laughs> and I didn't. And so Lindsay caught it, but we were far enough along. And she was like, well, should we restart? And it's like, no, this is good. So <laughs> we'll, we'll make well, sure it fits. So you guys yeah. chat back and forth during the show? Oh, we all the time. Hey, Josh has his nose hair. I cannot <laughs> believe Josh said that. <laughs> no, no, we don't. Thankfully, I, I had it up. So yeah, I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't catch that. That's all right. Okay, so we'll put the put the wraps on it. Um, I did my pause there for the WFRN, and uh, so four segments. We've got thirteen minutes now, assuming I turn the timer on. And just a little, so mortgage rates did go down to kind of follow, and they've bounced back up. And I come back down a little bit though too. One of the websites that I look at. And they, they stop publishing them. Typically, our rates automatically update on our website four times a day. Due to the current market volatility, however, mortgage rates are changing <laughs> within minutes. That's crazy. And it's not that they're changing within minutes. They they needed the they needed the sugar daddy to step in and say, hey, listen, we'll buy all your paper, so go ahead and, and write all you want. Yep. And the sugar daddy actually, who doesn't have any money? So I in that last segment, there was a moment where you guys both kind of looked at me, and I wasn't. Uh, oh, no coincidence! I I was somewhere circling <laughs> Pluto. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had my, anyways. So I had my head someplace else. So my head space and timing issues are uh, resolved, I think. And what are we going to hit this segment? 
So we can, if there's any final comments, just because I botched the timing, if there's any final comments on that, I, I feel like we wrapped, we wrapped it. Um, but if there's any final comment on having a mortgage and retirement, final calls to action, um, we can do that. And then uh, we've got some questions from fans of the show. So I've got those listed on the outline instead of in the, um, in a question bank. Okay. So do we want to finish anything? Um, I, I tried to finish with the call to action that really it just depends on your financial situation. So contact your CFP. We can lead with that if you'd like. Okay. Then yeah. what is it? Lead with questions? Yeah, just yeah. lead with questions maybe. All right. Well, the only thing, if I was going to, the only thing I would, the only way I would wrap is I would say the guiding principles haven't changed. How they, how the current environment is guides your actions relative to those principles yeah, strategy your yeah. strategies may change a little oh, bit that's good that's good okay you want to say that sure great <laughs> if i can say it as badly as i just said it, it'd be fantastic <laughs> getting a lot of questions about filing for unemployment even the new pandemic unemployment assistance we got a great question here from a fan of the show that we're going to hit in just a moment this is the Wise Money Show with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being here. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Every episode of the Wise Money Show is on our YouTube channel, as well as lots of other content, especially regarding how to take your next wise step in light of these changes going on with the CARES Act and stimulus and all of that. Kevin's going to share a nugget of, of wisdom here in just a moment. Um, but make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, search Wise Money Show, subscribe, turn on notifications, and give us that thumbs up. Share the content as well. Lots of folks using YouTube to get information, and there's tons of financial noise out there. Tons. So this is your source for financial wisdom. All right, before we get to, fan to the uh, questions from fans of the show, let's, let's just put a wrap on, you know, should you have a mortgage in retirement, and then how does the current environment shape that. Yeah, I the, because the question is, how do I make my financial decisions? And what we encourage people to do is to make your financial decisions in the context of a financial plan. And we you so you want that to your financial decisions to be process driven, not product driven. So as planners, we we use financial planning and then there are guiding principles that we apply and the guiding principles don't change during a time like the coronavirus. You know, I, I had a meeting with some folks this week. It was the first time I met with them, and I said, well, how, how do you make your financial decisions? And they said, well, we, we fight about them, and then we just do it. And I thought, I, I really, to me, it was so refreshing because that's what a lot of folks do. A lot of folks don't have a decision-making process as it relates to their finances. So as nerds, we love processes and we say, well, what's the process for making these financial decisions? What are your principles? So one, one principle that might serve you well right now, if you said, hey, I, I will always operate with, and again, this is your financial constitution, I will always operate with a cash reserve, okay? Three to six months. Hey, we're in a wartime men mentality right now, so ratchet that down immediately. So maybe a three-month cushion could be a six- or eight-month cushion. And you don't know. We don't know. We know this. Our economy works when everyone's spending money, and we all benefit from that. So I benefit from that. So in a selfish way, I would want to tell you, go spend money. But no way. Right now? No. No. Cut, cut your expenses. Revisit your expenses. If you're home, fix the roof while the sun's shining. Figure out what the budget is. What should I be doing? What kind of cuts should I make? Maybe, maybe your entertainment. But if you like to go to the movies, your entertainment budget just got cut involuntarily. That's right. <laughs> so, so I would not. I would not be. If I was going. If I had extra cash, related to a point that Josh made, I'd be. I'd be front unloading my retirement plan for the year versus. Uh, doing my mortgage. Right so the, the principles don't change. The strategies can adapt. 
yeah. to changing times. And that's where I was going with the next wise step videos that we point out all the time. I, you know, we're going to tell you how the, how the strategy might need to change. Right. But you've got to have guiding principles in your financial life and really to help you navigate those guiding principles and all of those strategies. That's the creativity That's your CFP. That's your certified financial planner. Having a bank relationship, having an insurance agent, having a tax preparer, doing your investments, having an estate plan attorney. If you're the one holding all those pieces together and needing to connect all those dots, um, it, 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 oh, it's probably your full time job because it just takes a lot of work to stay up to date on those things. That's the job of your certified financial planner. All right, so let's shift to questions from fans of the show. Got a great one this week from Edna. Uh, I work as a PRN at a physical therapist, as a physical therapist assistant. Since COVID-19, the hospitals are not using PRN employees, which I found interesting. So she asked, can I file for unemployment? Yeah, what, what a heartbreaking situation to be um, you know, at, at no fault of your own, maybe one of the victims of this whole uh, market crash and the economic shutdown here. So our, our heart certainly goes out to you, Edna. Um, I, I think it's important for people to recognize that the government has signaled over and over um, that they want to support employees and support workers, especially those who are either uh, being forced to stay at home or, um, you know, just out of precaution and, and being safe are part of this, this shutdown. And it's not just the states that are supporting, it's the federal government who is uh, stepping in for 16 weeks. There's an offer on the table here, an extra $600 above and beyond what the states will pay each week. Each week. Okay. So uh, hopefully that gives you some peace of mind that there will still be income coming in for a period of time, even if you're not able to work. Y you got to go through the, the labor of uh, applying and jumping through the hoops and everything like that. But um, b between that and these uh, recovery rebate checks that are just now starting to land in people's bank accounts, hopefully that gives you some liquid cash to be able to stay current on the most important expenses to keep food on the table. And, and more than anything, uh, leave yourself in a position where you're not completely financially handcuffed or, or handicapped when we come out of this on the other side. Let me, let me answer the question that you didn't ask, and that's, should I? And, and to everyone listening, the answer is yes. There are more people that have applied for unemployment right now who had never thought they would need to. Never, ever, ever. And there's this, there's this emotional, moral, or something, there's some sort of pull to say, I shouldn't need to do this, or I, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm going to just set that aside. Do it. And I, and I agree with you, Mike, but I would check with my employer first. Okay, yeah. Because, because if my employer applied for a PPP loan and they're going to get money to keep me on the payroll – and, pay, and fully pay my payroll, then I, sh I should not do that. So definitely, because I've talked to folks that are totally disconnected from their employer, and, and they're, they're saying to me, well, you know, my employer, they're busy, they're talking to people, they're trying to figure out if they can get a rent abatement and if they can make payroll and if they can do this and this. They don't want to talk to me. I'm like, well, that's fine. You just need to know what they're doing because if their plan is to put you on payroll fully and keep you on payroll for the 56 days that it takes for the loan forgiveness feature to kick in from the PPP loan, then don't go on unemployment. You, you can't, right? You can't. So yes, you need that. You need that clarity. If, if you know, if you're not working, you're not getting paid. D d I'll, I'll free you up from, from that <laughs> emotional feeling. Go apply for unemployment. Now, Edna, I had already reached out and, and answered, answered your question, and it was, well, the, for your situation, can I file for unemployment as a PRN? Um, it really depends how you were getting paid. Um, a lot of PRNs are employed right through the hospital, and so you actually get a, get a paycheck from the hospital. You get a W-2 as well. And if you're W-2, then yeah, yeah, you file for unemployment. That, that's your employer. If you work on a contract basis, though, where you're sort of contracted out maybe through an agency and they pay you as a 1099 contractor, that normal answer would be no. 
No, you don't get unemployment, but you get something special right now, and that's called pandemic unemployment assistance. And it's you're eligible then for that six hundred dollar benefit. You're not eligible for a state benefit, the the traditional state benefit, but you're eligible for that six hundred dollar a week benefit for the first sixteen weeks or so, um, and or longer. No, sixteen weeks, I believe. Um, and that's through, you're going to go through your state, but you're going to be getting access to federal funds. So that answer is still yes, even if you were, um, if you're considered a subcontractor. So great, yeah, great but question. This, but this is why you want to have a guide. You want to have a Sherpa, a coach, someone who knows your financial life as well as you do, who can step right in and give you that answer. Because here's the issue. There's a, um, if you, I, I was talking to a massage therapist recently and she was asking about the EIDL loan, specifically the grant feature. The economic injury disaster loan has a $10,000 advance or grant on it that is not taxable, doesn't need to be repaid and then there's another loan on top of that and she's like hey i I'm, i can't see patients right now I, I i'm not able to give massages i applied for this thing and now they're telling me that that ten thousand grant is a thousand per employee that's how they come up with whether you get 10 grand or what what it, whatever your advances she's like i don't have any employees what should i do and it's like no you should apply for the unemployment pandemic insurance and i think there's tons of people out there that have been working on their own that haven't that aren't able to work right now that aren't going to collect because they just don't know. You know, this is such an interesting time. I, I hear from people all, all the time who say, boy, I bet your phones are just ringing off the hook with uh, people who are concerned about their investments or they're worried about the markets or whatever. And, and that's actually not the case. It's, yeah. it's not calls because people are panicking about their investments. I, th I think we've got people uh, our, our clients in a in a calm enough portfolio model that they're fine emotionally. The phones are ringing off the hook for these types of questions. Yep. It's new programs that never existed before. And how do I take advantage of them? How do I get some sort of financial relief during this this crisis? And that is exactly why what Kevin said is is so wise that you need to have a guide along the way, someone that can be a sounding board who is aware of the things that you're not aware of or can help make sense and piece together multiple strategies that will leave you in a position where you are okay on the other side of this. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I've got a great great question here from Ryan. I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna make this into a headlining topic for a show in the future, okay? It is so good and so stinking confusing, and we are in the, we are in the throes of this right now. But here's what Ryan asked. I didn't sell any of my mutual funds last year. Why did I have a capital gain that I had to report on my 2019 taxes? You know, as confusing as that is, that hurts right now when you look and you say, oh, my investments were down 20 some percent and I got to pay capital gains <laughs> taxes for last year and I didn't even sell anything. That's a head scratcher. Yeah. So the, it's understanding a, a mutual fund's a pool, an investment pool, and so you're going to get the the benefits uh, and the consequences of what the mutual fund manager does. And if it's actively managed, and the m fund manager wants to sell Apple that's up three hundred percent and buy Google, they can do that. And you're going; those capital gains don't get paid by the mutual fund itself. They get passed out to the holders of the mutual funds. And it is surprising because the the my first experience with that was in the year 2000 when the stock market was down 10 percent and people had massive capital gains to yeah, pay. Very confusing. We're going to be hitting that topic again, though. Great question, Ryan. All right, that's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Josh Gregory, Kevin Corhorn, and myself, have a Great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.